Hi, Mamas and Mama. It's good to be with you this evening. I heard a joke during the COVID times where we, we were all locked down about couples playing a game. And the game was called, Why Do You Always Do It That Way? And it sounds like an interesting game where nobody wins. And I think that could be true when we have teenagers too. Sometimes we play the game of, why do you do it that way? Why are you always talking like that? You're too loud. You're too quiet. You're too demanding. Nobody wins at that game either. When we have teenagers in the house and we had six teenagers at one time, um, our six children are, are um, seven years apart. So there was a time we had them from 12 to 19. And that was a crazy, crazy time in our house. And for some of them, it felt like we had uh, uh, the terrible twos. You know, they were in that stage where they were fighting for independence and fighting to be their own person and usually fighting against me because it was the mama who got the brunt of that. And I found that when I would approach my kids with an attitude of, I have got to fix you, what you're doing is wrong and I've got to fix that, then I would always find myself in a very frustrating position and in trouble. And I think the problem comes when we look at our kids as problems to be solved, then we come at them with strategies and solutions. But when we look at our kids, especially those teenagers, made in the image of God, then we come at them with curiosity and wonder. And I wonder what it would be like for us to use our words to move towards our teenagers with curiosity and wonder instead of an attitude of, I've got to get you fixed before I release you into the world. So how do we do that? How do we move towards our kids with curiosity? One of my favorite verses that I memorized when I was a teenager, actually, um, comes from the Holy Scriptures, and it's Ephesians 4.29. And it says this, it says, Let no unwholesome word come out of your mouth, but only words that are helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it might benefit those who listen. And this this one phrase can change how we interact with our teenagers. And so let's just take a minute and let's break it down phrase by phrase. That first part said unwholesome talk. Don't let any unwholesome talk out of your mouths. So you as a mama, are you grumbling about your day? Are you complaining about your spouse? Are you gossiping about your sister-in-law? All those things kind of count in the unwholesome category. That place where probably those words shouldn't come out. Probably they're not there to make things better. And we grumble and we complain and we're... And our kids have really big ears. And they're watching us and listening to us. And if it's okay for us, then it's okay for them, even when we don't want to hear it from them. Um, what comes out of you? That's always a good question about your own unwholesome talk. The second question that comes out of that verse in Ephesians 4.29 is, is what I say helpful? You know, you could have a kid who wants to just eat ice cream all day long and you want to tell her, hey, if you eat ice cream, you're going to get fat. But, but that's not really dealing with the heart of the issue about why why do I have a need to go to ice cream in the first place? What is it inside me that is maybe feeling hungry or lonely or sad? And the ice cream feels like it might fill up a spot. Um, we need to be careful that our words are helpful in the moment. Sometimes we just need to listen. When our kids are struggling and they come in and they're screaming, they're like, I hate my teacher. I hate this situation. It would be very easy to say, oh no, you can't hate them. You need to be nice and respectful. And we begin to tell them how to act rather than to take a step back and to say, wow, it sounds like you have a lot of emotion. Can you tell me more about that? That's a way that we use our words to be helpful to help our own teenager who is that terrible too and trying to deal with all that emotion inside them. 
Our job is to give them words, to know how to process that emotion, to know what to do with it, even when they're struggling to not just all over us. Um, Yeah, even when our kids do dumb things, it's not the time to tell them that they did a dumb thing. (laughs) It's a time to go, wow, huh? What do you think about that? What do you think could be done different? It's a great opportunity to ask questions. Is it helpful? Are you helping your kid learn how to be more mature and set them up for a way to do that? One of the next principles that comes out of that verse is, is it helpful according to the need of the moment? Does it fit this moment? Um, Our kids need us to listen and to understand their feelings. And I think as moms, we have a special opportunity to help our kids whose emotional part of the brain right up here isn't quite developed yet. They don't have that frontal lobe development where they can just logically work themselves through, but they do have the emotional centers of the brain all on fire. That's just part of brain development for a teenager. And so for those kids, we need to help them put words on what emotions they're expressing. We want to do it without shaming them. Like, here you go being mad again. What's wrong with you? Or embarrassment or fear. We want to put words on it for them so that they can identify and go, yeah, I'm feeling shame. Or, yeah, I'm really feeling fearful about that situation. I don't want to fail my test. I don't want this to be hard. I don't want to be alone. Um, I think one thing that we can do as moms is to kind of slow down the conversation. I remember the story of um, uh, a man who said, uh, somebody was telling him, you need to communicate better to your child. And, and he goes, I communicate all the time. I tell him to eat his beans. And he tells me he wants a new bicycle. <laughs> that man's brain, he was communicating. He was doing what he needed to do. And yet he was communicating facts, but wasn't really touching or connecting to the heart. And so I think that we as moms need to slow everything down, ask our questions slowly with calm voices, and to be observant with our kids. I remember one time watching my kid, watching one of our children, um, my son, and every time he would have a text from a friend, he would be angry and he would kind of throw the phone and he would be reactive. And I just started making a comment like, It seems like every time you talk to Yahshua, you're angry. I wonder what that's about. And in a calm way, I could engage with his emotion by putting a word on it and then could have a conversation. Not of, well, Yahshua's stupid and he's a terrible friend and you need to get rid of him. But just by being there and, and, and listening quietly (laughs) and asking questions in a calm way. I found too that with my kids, whenever I would get upset, they would begin to back off because I think they got scared of my emotion. And so it was better for me to just stay calm and to listen and to ask good questions. Tell them what you're observing in their lives and ask them about it. Um, I think that's the way that we're we're able to help them right now, just like that verse tells us to do. And then the last part of that verse, it says this, let no unwholesome word come out of your mouth, but only words um, that are good for edification or building up according to the need of the moment. And here's the last part, that it might give benefit to those who listen. Have you ever been in a room where two people are fighting and it just makes you feel really, really uncomfortable (laughs) because you don't know how to manage it? I think that's what that verse means. And I think for our teenagers, it means that we do what we can to communicate with them in such a way that it does not shame them or embarrass them um, in front of their friends or in front of even their other siblings. I noticed with our kids um, 
when I would be corrective or would be harsh with them, it had influence and effect on everybody else. And it had influence and effect on our, how our whole family felt. And so I had to just be so careful with my own words about not reacting harshly to them um, because it's not always beneficial to the other people in the room who hear what you have to say. So my question really comes back to you. Uh, well, even before that, I'll tell you about this. Tonight I had a conversation with one of our daughters and um, she is in college and so growing. She's just out of her teenage years, but she was expressing her opinions and I didn't necessarily agree with them. And in the moment, my mother was sitting there too. And, and as my daughter is saying these things, part of me wants to fix her, you know, be the good mom, act like the good mother and, and tell her what she's supposed to think and how she's supposed to do it. And, and it was like a voice came into my head that said, no, no, be curious, be curious about who she is move towards her with wonder, not with a strategy in order to fix her. She is an image bearer of God. She is worthy of love and belonging, and she is worthy to be pursued by her mom. Even if I disagree with her ideology, um, I can listen and I can connect to the emotion of it. And maybe later we'll have another conversation about the ideology. But in that moment, I need to just be there to listen. Um, and that doesn't always mean that we agree. There can be a lot of things our kids do that we don't agree with. But can I still listen and be there for them? And you know, I think one of the greatest gifts that we can give our kids as mamas um, are our words. Our words that build up. Our words that are not unwholesome, but are according to the need of the moment that they might give grace to those who hear. So what kind of words do you want to give your kids today? What kind of words do you want to give your husband? Because um, we have the power to build or to destroy. And we just have to decide what we're going to do. I hope you have a great day. Know that I'm thinking of you and I love you with all my heart, even though I don't live right there right now.